coming up on this edition of the ZTV Sports Report. The men's soccer team heads into the MAC tournament and we'll show you how they did. The women's basketball team officially tips off against Hiram and Coach Arends returns to Coach's Corner. All coming up now on the ZTV Sports Report. Welcome to this episode of the ZTV Sports Report, your home for Akron Zips Athletics. I'm your host, Anna Toltz. First up is men's soccer who kicked off the first round of the MAC tournament. Let's take a closer look. In Porter's last MAC tournament appearance at the University of Akron, the Zips captured home field advantage where they welcomed Bowling Green. After last year's disappointing loss in the semifinals, would the Zips be able to send Porter off with a trip to the MAC finals? In order to make it to the MAC Finals, the Zips had to first beat Bowling Green to keep their chances of winning a MAC title alive. And Akron has the chance to score right off the start as the MAC Player of the Year, Scott Caldwell, kicks it behind to Thomas Schmidt, who tries his best to use his head on this one but can't get the goal. Zips on the offense attack again. They recover the ball. A pass goes to Schmidt, who pulls a bicycle kick, which looks like it might, but no, it goes wide. Almost the end of the first half, Akron has a free kick, which Will Trapp drives it 30 yards to the corner of the goal. And just like that, the Zips are up 1-0. Things are looking good for Akron. Less than two, yes, two minutes later, it's Caldwell again who gets the pass to Schmidt just ahead of his defender and kicks the ball just over the goalie's reach. And an excited Schmidt jumps in in the crowd as the Zips increase their lead by two. That brings the game to halftime and the Zips are happy with their lead. Second half, Chad Barson with a good look, but not this time. Another good shot off before the end, but Bowling Green won't have it. Doesn't matter, Akron goes on to win 2-0. The W improves the number one ranked Zips to an overall record of 16-1-2 and, and gives Porter a last chance to grab the MAC title. The victory over Bowling Green also advances them into the MAC finals. Akron faces Northern Illinois for their potential ninth MAC title, and right off the start, Akron testing. And I use goalie, who in the next play makes a great diving save to prevent the Zips from scoring. Midway through this first half, Akron with yet another shot, but it gets deflected, and the game will be scoreless going into the second half. But the start of the second is no different. The Huskies are not making it easy on Akron, but Saad Abdul Salam changes that with this goal as the Zips go up 1 0. Less than three minutes later, it'll be Akron again. But this time, it's Aiden Quinn netting the goal, and Akron has a nice two-goal lead. That's all the Zips will need as they win with the shutout 2-0. Porter was able to get his last MAC title, and before he heads to the MLS, he's going for a second national title. Coming up later in the show, Chris Kuhn and Parker Smith take a look at the Zips trip to the NCAA tournament. It's almost the end of football season and the Zips have just one win for 2012. The team looked to gain another W as they played host to Massachusetts in their last home game of the regular season. Can the Zips break their seven game losing streak? Maybe some motivation from senior night will give the Zips the fight they need to get a victory. And it seems as if it just may be what the Zips needed as UMass's quarterback almost gets sacked and JD Grids is in the end zone to pick off the pass. The Zips wouldn't be able to answer off the turnover, and later in the first, the Minutemen would be the first to get on the board with a field goal. And nine minutes later, we'll get another three points. UMass up 6-0 into the second quarter. Akron looks to answer, but Dalt Williams throws the interception. That wouldn't be his only one either. Next possession, Williams again throws an interception, resulting in a UMass touchdown. Another field goal gives UMass a 15-point lead at the half. Third quarter, Akron ready to execute, and sure enough, Jawan Chisholm leaps over the line into the end zone. Akron trails by eight going into the fourth. Near the end of the game, Williams gets, again gets intercepted. UMass goes on to win 22-14. Daunt Williams' forced interceptions won't help the Zips get a win on senior night, but would connect with Marquello Sewell, who finished the game with 105 yards and one touchdown. Akron has a bye week coming up, but will play Toledo in their final match on the 17th. Um, just a very disappointing loss. I'm, I'm very, very disappointed. Uh, a lot of credit has got to UMass for turning the ball over less than we did, for, for winning the field position battle, winning the turnover battle, winning the time of possession battle, uh, and, and ultimately winning the football game. We lost all of those. Um, just disappointed in the performance of our, our offense today. Uh, just, and I have to take credit. I, I, uh, it's my responsibility to have the offense ready. I didn't have them ready today. We had a punt block along with the uh, – that went – another turnover that went down there. And um, 
and it was one of those days where you just sat out the still on the sideline and and was wondered what next would happen. From InfoCision Stadium to the Zips Old Playing Field, the Rubber Bowl has new renovations on the horizon for a potential USFL team that is currently in the works. Our own Chris Kuhn traveled out to see what is going on and talked with CEO and President of Team One Marketing Group, Sean Mason. This used to be what it was like at the Rubber Bowl. However, now it's a dilapidated Akron landmark, but there is hope. For us, uh, it's the driving force to bringing a USFL franchise here. Sean Mason of Team One Marketing Group looks to revive the 72-year-old stadium with pro football, except there's still work to be done. Basically the demolition side of things, mostly on the inside of the stadium and uh, getting the um, locker rooms and concession stand and bathrooms on the inside all taken care of. The Rubber Bowl hasn't hosted a game or seen a tenant since 2008 and as you can see this stadium has a lot to be desired. We're probably looking at, you know, around seven, eight million dollars in renovations here at the stadium to, uh, to, to bring it back up. If there's one thing in favor for Mason, it's that the field isn't in too bad of condition. Um, we could probably get maybe three, four more years out of it. So roughly we probably got about $70,000 um, in field repair. With all that Mason and his group have to do, they expect the Rubber Bowl ready by spring of 2014 and the sale of it finalizing in late November. For the ZTV Sports Report, I'm Chris Kuhn. Coming up after the break, we show you the women's basketball opener and the volleyball team faces Ohio University in their last regular season game. Oh, and we also have the man of the segment, Mr. D. Harris, coming up. You're watching the ZTV Sports Report. <laughs> 